My name's Lee Mather and I'm the Game Director on F1 2018. So really I come up with the, the, the overall vision for the game, what it is that we think we should be making, how we're going to you know, really replicate the world of Formula One effectively to the gamer, what we think will get people excited and, and coming back to the game. Yeah, so I think the, the big thing for us is that we've got a really immersive career mode which we've been working on for the last few years. And this year we've got closer to Formula One even more by adding in the press interactions. You know, everything that the player then has to do when they get interviewed has a knock-on effect. It's super important that a racing driver isn't just quick on track, but they can also manage their business away from the track as well. And their personality really shines through. You know, they can motivate the team, they can motivate departments, they can actually manipulate how they you know, get a better contract and negotiate for a better deal with their team or with other teams. So, I mean, that's not an area that I get directly involved in. So, we've got a lot of very clever people who work in all of those areas. But as you can imagine, we push all of those things incredibly hard with a game like Formula One. Simulating all those elements that the cars have is, is huge. So, the tyre model is incredibly intense. We, you know, we simulate the fuel burn. We simulate the energy recovery system this year. You know, that's really complex stuff. But if you look at the visuals, we're throwing around a lot of cars on a very detailed, very large circuit, you know, with particle effects the sun coming to the clouds, the rain, and when it's raining you get all that spray. You know, that's a lot of visual stuff that we need to throw on screen, so we're always pushing the boundaries, I think, with all of those things. I think we've got a great level of assists that can help a player with the on-track experience. So, as I mentioned, we've now got the ERS in the game. That's managed with four, five different modes. But if you're not of that level where you want to contend with that, you can put it in automatic and the game will manage it for you. You can turn on traction control, ABS, braking assist. You know, you can even have the race starts assisted. All of those things make the game accessible to players who maybe don't have the skill to play at a very high level. But also, as you play through the career, we have little voice messages or little tutorials that help to educate the player on how to upgrade the vehicle, how to you know, manage their contracts, how to manage their rivalries. All of those things we try and help the player to understand. Oh, definitely. Definitely. You, you can do 100% race distance, so you can do all of the race weekends, you can do all of the practice sessions, all of the qualifying sessions, and all of the full 100% race. You know, and during that, obviously, we're simulating all of the things that go on in a real Formula One Grand Prix. So, yeah, for, for, the, for the, the hardcore purist, it's definitely there as well. It's one for, for somebody else to make the decision on there. <laughs> So, I mean, we're actually bringing uh, a mobile title out later this year on, on mobile devices. So, we've got F1 Mobile coming out later this year. So, yeah, definitely, you can definitely have a, a good experience. VR. Yeah, I mean, it's something we look at every year. You know, it's another thing we would, we would like to do VR. But there are other areas of the game that we've focused on this year. So, we've obviously worked on two new tracks. We had Paul Ricard, we had Hockenheim. We've worked on the visual effects in the game this year, so the environments look so much more believable, so much more realistic. And that's something that absolutely everybody can appreciate, and it looks very cool. It's also quite challenging, obviously, to throw around the, the level of detail that we do in a game while retaining the frame rate that allows somebody to really get that Formula 1 experience. To, to not be able to hit 60 frames per second loses that fidelity in the controls, and I think that's very, very important. The greatest Formula One game of all time. <laughs> so, the reason to buy Formula One F1 2018 is definitely, if you're a racing game fan, it's an amazing racing game. If you're a motorsports fan, it's a great representation of one of the best motorsports in the world. <laughs>